Hey everyone, going to do something different tonight at three o'clock in the morning, decided to make another video, came ac across this video recommended and I do remember watching it around a year ago and for some reason it was recommended by YouTube again tonight, it popped up, and I clicked on it and uh, let's go into it. All right, exotic. Yeah. Exotic. Uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? Um, well, I just tell everybody all over because I grew up in like foster cares and juvenile halls and stuff like that. So I went, lived everywhere from Long Beach to here in LA, um, the Valley, Iowa. Different families? Yeah, different families, different placements. And why did your biological parents lose you? Um, two months old. Do you know why? Um, I think my mom was like, you know, pretty drugged out and like also in the game. Oh, is that right? And Turning off here. Do you see that this isn't a love and light realm? This isn't a, earth is not a school. It's not all the things that the new agers push. I just happened to read some comments on another, on another channel that covers near-death experiences. And it was all love and light and all this stuff. And they could tell, they were saying they could tell that the guy was sincere and they wanted to have him back on. It was actually the guy that I did the ND analysis of earlier tonight and posted on my channel. And, uh, just about every comment I read until I could, I just couldn't take reading anymore. They were all completely duped. Calling this earth, saying love and light. And I mean, it's just, it's incredible. But when, I wanted to show us a, a story like her story, exotic is her alias or her nickname. I wanted to show this because I wonder sometimes, like, are people so sheltered from this? sheltered from how other people live, struggle, suffer in this realm that are born without a chance, that are born to parents that are bad people, gang members that lose their children or give up their children or various different things. I mean, drug-addicted babies. I mean, you, I could go on forever. Do you realize that? It's heartbreaking. I want you to really understand that. I don't want you to understand suffering to hurt you. I don't want to hurt people that are listening to this, but this is painful, all right? There's a lot of people in this realm that are suffering in the womb before they're even born, and then they're suffering as babies, and then they're tossed around from one placement or one foster place to another to another, and uh, they live a hard life from day, you could say from day one or from you want to say in the womb, the ones that are fetal alcohol syndrome addicted. Uh, there's there's all kinds of stuff. There's babies born with drug addictions. I mean, people don't think of this. They don't think. It's painful to read these fucking comments on other channels by people that don't think. They really don't think beyond themselves. And they somehow have this view of themselves that they're good people when they say this shit. That makes zero sense. It doesn't add up. It's it's a lie. They're pushing lies when they say love and light and all this stuff. I could see saying something positive if you understand the suffering of this realm. And you're trying to put a positive message out. Give people energy. Give people courage. Uplift people. Uh, help people that are down. I understand that. All right? But I don't understand... Uh, when they don't, when they have no no concept of suffering, and they push this love and light message, and uh, it's just bullshit. All right, it's like they don't see this. They don't see young women like this this prostitute, and I'm call, only calling her that. All right, some people will be on my back over that. It's in the title. That's the description. I'm not saying it to judge her or to harm her. She's a pretty girl, all right? Um, 
she's had a hard life. It's a sad life. And uh, I'm showing this in hopes of waking people up. And I'm going to show more of this. And I don't know what limits I can push on YouTube with some of this. I realize this, this is on YouTube already. And it's a big channel on YouTube, so they seem to be fine. But hopefully he doesn't come after me because this is fair use. I'm doing commentary. I'm only using snippets. I'm not recording the whole thing straight through or anything. I'm not just copying it. Um, I'm giving narrative. I'm giving uh, criticism in my my uh, commentary. So I'm breaking it up that way. I'm doing. I'm following the rules. I'm doing everything that you're required to do to share other content. And my dad was in prison. Oh, that'll do it. And you went through uh, high school. You made it through high school. No. How far did you go in school? Um, like the beginning of middle school. And then middle school, I was no longer DCFS. I became probation and I went to juvenile hall. And from there, I just like basically stopped going to school. And you, where'd you go then? To the streets? Um, just the streets. Really? What did you, how old were you when you started working as a um, prostitute? When I started working, I was about like 13. 13? Yeah. That was in LA? Uh-huh. Yeah. You had a pimp at that time? Yeah. I had ran away from one of the placements and um, like this time when I had ran away, you normally... Just want to jump in here. You can see how sad this is, but you can see the resilience in her spirit when she's speaking about some of this stuff. And I know some of it is covering covering up the pain which is a natural thing that um, abused, abused children do a lot of times when they're teenagers or, you know, young, young adults. There's ways of smiling through it and covering it up. And even when you're speaking about it, just, you know, not, not revealing that you're hurting, that you're feeling pain and all that stuff. But this is a painful life. All right. This is just one case, but her life matters. Her pain matters. People that have been abused, victimized in various ways, suffered child abuse, let's say, or, you know, things that I can't even name because YouTube, there's no free speech. So it's censored. But you know what I'm talking about, I'm sure. You can imagine what I'm talking about, what children go through here and what children in the streets go through that are living in the streets at that age. So just think about it. If you're someone that's on my channel that still doesn't see the suffering in this realm, you've been living with your eyes closed and a blindfold on. That's not an insult. That's just the truth. It's me telling you the truth that most people that you're around seemingly won't because otherwise maybe you would be aware of it. And people that are asleep tend to hang around people that are asleep that just enable it. And it's just, you don't look at anything. So this goes on in this realm where someone is born. You talk, and, and a lot of Christians say, we have free will. God gives us free will. Okay. And we consented and blah, blah, blah. Did she consent to all this as a baby? To have parents like that, that, that were gang members, probably drug addicts, gave her up. Dad was in prison, this and that. And uh, they lost her. They lost uh, custody. And she was raised by strangers. That's what it is when you're in the system, you're raised by strangers, okay? Is that any way to live? Just from that, just that. And then she's in the streets, you know, from middle school, a middle schooler in the streets. Can you imagine? Do you understand what I'm saying? So just her case alone, if you think about it long enough, and you don't even have to think about millions of others, focus on her, her life what she's been through. She didn't stand a chance. You know what I'm saying? She didn't stand a fucking chance. You know what I mean? It's not free will. It's not choices. It's not, oh, she can say, she didn't stand a fucking chance in this life. And this realm was designed that way. 
You get what I'm saying? It's not her fault. It's not her choices. It's not, oh, she did this and that, and she grew up in a perfect home, and then as a teenager when she was, you know, just about to turn 18, rebelled and, you know, became a porn star or stripper. No. She was doomed to fail from the fucking start. And I'm not calling her a failure. I'm not putting her down. I'm just talking about her circumstances, the the card deck, the hand that she was dealt. Okay? Normally I have ran away by myself, but this time I have ran away with one of the other girls that was in the placement. And it ended up being her pimp. But I didn't know that it was her pimp. So she ended up going back to the placement and I ended up staying with the dude. How was that relationship? Um, really rough. You've, you've had more than one pimp in your? Yeah. How old are, how old are you now? Um, now I'm 23. You're 23. Yeah, so I you're just st- turned 23. You're still young. How many pimps have you had? Um, I've had... Six? Six. Yeah. And why do you... Jesus Christ. Believe that? Six pimps? 23 years old? Look at the life she's lived since 13. Look at even up until that age. Middle school, you know, she ran away and got involved in this. Can you imagine? Think about it. It's not directed at the people that are already aware of the suffering here. I'm directing this right at the people that look at us like we're we're way off. We're disturbed. We're deranged is how they look at us for saying about the suffering in this realm. And the people that make excuses and say, well, God gave us free will. Where was her free will? Where was her chance? Where was where did when did she consent to this, this life? This tragic life, this heartbreaking life that she's led. Do you understand this? Do you understand that you're way off when you're looking at us like we're deranged for seeing the suffering in this realm that you can't see? Because from our perspective, you look like you're wearing a blindfold to this, to her story, and to many more. That's the way you look to us. You look like you're turning a blind eye, like we're trying to show you, hey, there's a lot of suffering here. And you're looking the other direction, just pretending you don't hear us. You leave a pimp, or why does he get rid of you, or what happens? Um, Every pimp I've left, <laughs> and it's just because it gets too much for me to, you know, maintain and try to maintain myself at the same time. And right now you're without a pimp. Right. So maybe we can talk honestly about, about that. Yeah. Uh, Tell me, tell me about the, what what it's like for a girl working the streets to have a pimp. Um, very like unfair, you know, like. Because a lot of, just to preface this, a lot of my, to explain this, a lot of the girls that I interview will say they don't have pimps when they actually do. Yeah. Because they're trying to cover for them. So. Yeah. So you're not covering for anyone right now. No. So what, what is your experience with pimps? Like, it's, it's very um, unsettling, you know, to work that hard and do some of the things that we have to do in order to get the money, just to give it to somebody else. And we don't see nothing out of it, but. Stop it here for a second. I'm going to skip ahead a bit, and I I can't play, excuse me, I can't play this whole thing, so I just have to play clips. Bring up in you, I mean, it's got to be hard on a woman. Yeah, it's hard, like, sitting back thinking on it, because it's just like, you know, a lot of prostitutes or girls that are in the life, like, if we tell somebody that's not in the life or doesn't understand the life, it's like we get judged and like categorized by that. Like, oh, she's a hoe. Like, that's all she's that, you know, that's all she's good for. Right. Or that's all she does. Like, it's just like, no, it's more to that. Cause for some of us, it isn't just, oh, she likes hoeing or, oh, she must do this cause she likes sex. Like, 
no, it's bigger than that. What, what do you think a lot of people that are not involved in this kind of life don't understand about girls that do this kind of work? Like it's, some it's, of it's us. It's survival, isn't it? It's, it's survival. Like for me, because I ran away and got involved into it, like yeah, it was little. something that stuck with me. Like it was the only thing that I knew besides getting a job and doing something legal. And, and you, didn't, you didn't have much of an education, so. Exactly. So and then one. I. Yeah, it's a sad life. I mean, what can I say? She's, uh, she spoke about having kids. So she has a couple of kids. And now they're going on a uh, task about her tattoos. So, so show me your face tattoo on the side. Yeah, I had a big Jordan, like about that big, tattooed in black, like oh. jet black. It said Jordan? Yeah. And now you've hidden it with some other design? Yeah, so the only thing that the dude could think to cover it was a whole bunch of roses, because I already had a rose right here. So I was like, all right. It's actually pretty. Thank you. And then the one on your eyebrow? Um, the one on my eyebrow, that's actually my best friend, but a pimp got jealous over it, so I had to cover it. Wow. So, yeah. Like, the day after I got it, I had to stop talking to the dude. Um, I wasn't allowed to go and see him. Um, he hit me up on Messenger and Instagram. I'm gonna, step, uh, I'm gonna skip forward a little bit here. Hey, are drugs a part of your life? Um, yeah. What do you use? Uh, crystal. Crystal meth is a popular one now. Yeah. But even now, you gotta be like cautious of it because it's been a lot of bad batches going around, like cut with fentanyl. Yeah, fentanyl or, will know. kill you. Yeah. Yeah. And is the addiction part of what keeps you in this lifestyle? Partially, yeah. Because you can't really function outside of this, you know, getting a regular job wouldn't. Yeah. I'm gonna pause it here for a moment. <clears throat> Talking about addiction, keeping her as a prostitute or being connected with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. When you think about it, just about all of us have addictions or vices. We're addicted to something. And that's the way it is. <clears throat> just to, uh, we all have certain vices. It's a sad, painful realm. That's the way this place is. It's designed that way. And that's probably the biggest hurdle that I think that I've noticed in other people that they can't seem to get over that one. That it's designed this way. But if you don't get over that hurdle, you're stuck here. If you see what I'm saying. So it really is a, a, a physical hurdle, a barrier. Or you could look at it instead of a hurdle, that you jump over, it's not that high. It's, it's bigger than that. It's a wall. It's a fucking wall that you got to climb over. And there are, there are some of us reaching our hands down and you're jumping up and some of you are maybe taking a half-hearted attempt to jump up and we want to help pull you over top. We're trying to help you. We really are. But you got to confront that, that this place was designed that way this isn't just a mistake. There's way too much suffering. There's way too much fucked up here where the patterns are there. The, the patterns are undeniable. They just You can't just look at this and go, oh, okay, well, maybe this got screwed up or maybe God's not perfect or maybe this, maybe that. There's way too much. You would be saying maybe continuously for days on end. There's that much. There's that much that's fucked up with this place. And I can't think of everything. There's other. There's people that have thought of things that I didn't notice or don't mention or they chime in with a good point or great point. It's the way it is. I don't think there's one person here that sees it all. Okay? I don't. I've never claimed that I do. In any video so far or even before I was on YouTube or making videos on YouTube. I was on YouTube for many, many years and I wasn't making videos. But you know what? 
not one person can name off every type of suffering or every part of this realm that's fucked up or every part that's fucked up by design. Because I'm talking about things that are not people's choices, that are not free will. Free will, I didn't create 10,000 diseases for humans. It's not free will. It's part of the design of this realm, whether you want to credit or blame, whichever way you prefer to look at it, a creator or a quote God or whatever for this. That was created. See what I'm saying? Including hereditary genetic diseases. Because I know there's people that want to defend their evil God. They don't want to blame their quote God for evil. They're so intent on that. And they're so they're so uh so brainwashed, so fearful of this monster, and so under Stockholm syndrome, they'll defend it no matter what. What about the hereditary diseases? Where did those come from? I know what you're gonna say. Enki and Enyul or Enyul or whatever his name is, like the the genetic interference and all it's not God, right? Well why didn't God just fucking wipe them out? He came down here and started inter interfering. And you'll say, Oh, but he, God did with the flood and well God, why would God use a flood? Why would he kill everyone if he's all if he's omnipotent? Why wouldn't he just wipe out evil? Target evil. Don't kill innocent people. Don't wipe out the whole world. That's what Christians think like, like little children. Seriously. They would welcome the world being wiped out again and say, well, it's our fault. There's lots of innocent humans. There's lots of innocent children. And you would, you would permit, give your God a pass to wipe out all this? To wipe out all the innocent? Because, oh, he's killing off the evil. Why doesn't he just fucking target evil? Just remove the evil. Leave the good. How about that? Oh, your God can't do that? Then he's not all-powerful. Then he's not omnipotent. He's not what you claim. And it's not me trying to go, go for a, a gotcha moment. It's just true. It doesn't add up. Your beliefs do not add up at all. They just don't. You're waiting for Jesus to come back to save you. You're waiting for rapture, waiting for this, waiting for that. But you won't look, and I'm pointing at my screen now, with my hand, with all my fingers, not one finger, all my entire hand is open, saying, look, please look at her. And the story's like this. All right? I'm serious. Watch some of these videos. Watch the whole thing. Watch all 32 minutes. And some of the others, I think, are longer on this soft white underbelly channel. Please watch them. And, and I can recommend other channels, too. To show homeless people, men, women, children. There's a lot of problems on this realm. And you won't blame God for anything. But who created this place? Who made it this way? The one that you kneel down and worship? Are you going to kneel down and, and worship and blow a monster in the afterlife? Is that your plan for death? Sure as fuck is not mine. I don't know what they're going to throw at me. Somebody said to me in a comment, commented on one of my videos, what are they going to do to us? If we're aware of these tricks, we're aware of the soul trap, we're aware that entities show up, they try to trick us with fake deceased loved ones, whether they're shapeshifters or AI projections, holograms, whether it's mind control, I don't know exactly what it is. We have theories. Could be creatures, it could be shapeshifter creatures, they could be complete AI projections, they could be completely unreal, just holograms, pretending to be just like the holodeck on the on the Enterprise in Star Trek the next generation, if you know what I'm saying. They could be like that, for all we know. But the point was their question was, what are you gonna do? What are we gonna do? What are they gonna throw at us? How are they gonna try to fool us or trick us if we don't fall for the fake love ones or the fake love bomb or you know we're, we don't take the bait with the the life review it's complete bullshit and we don't fall for spirit guides or authorities or anything's higher than what are they going to throw at us they're going to try to scare us with a fake hell or illusions or what you know i don't know because i've never seen somebody that's aware as a near-death experiencer that comes back and is talking about it and uh, didn't buy it, didn't buy the illusions, and didn't get tricked. 
But anyway, um, I think they're going to throw the whole kitchen sink at us. Or they're they. Th here's another possibility. This might sound weird. It might sound incredible, but it is still a possibility that maybe for some of us, let's say me, for example, just as an example, not out of ego, as an example, let's say me, and let's say I die, and uh, they realize, hey, we're not tricking this guy. He wants out of here no matter what. He's not going back. He's not consenting to shit. He's going to fight us. He's He's leaving out of this fucking place. I don't know, but this is a possibility. Maybe they just say, let this fucking troublemaker go. Because he's been in a thorn in our side on earth all these years. He's trying to start jailbreaks and get prison breaks going and get thousands out of here. You know, he's trying to fuck with us and he's trying to ruin everything for us. Let him out of here so we don't have to deal with him. But, do, you know, he can't come back in, can't influence inside the Matrix once he's out. It's firewalled off and you can't get back in. Maybe that's what they want. Maybe that's what they'll do. I'm not counting on that. I'm just saying maybe that's a possibility. Where it is possible. Where you can be a thorn in their side so much. You can do this in a psych ward too. Where they'll kick you out. They don't want to deal with someone that is that impossible to control. Is that rebellious. Is that incorrigible. Has that sense of humor. Where they just fu they, they completely mind fuck the staff the nurses, the doctors, and they, they don't want it, the security. They don't want to deal with it anymore. They just can't handle this patient. They're too much. They're, they're madder than a hatter. They're fucking uh, a complete madman, let's say, hypothetically. I'm not speaking about myself here being, <laughs> being in that situation. But um, it doesn't have to be me. It could be someone else that was just so impossible, completely impossible to be controlled, where they broke every rule. And they helped other patients ex escape from the place. And they rigged the doors so that the alarms wouldn't go off anymore. The exit doors, the emergency exit doors going out into a courtyard by the fence, let's say, for example, hypothetically. Um, <laughs> and they did all sorts of things. And they, they just drove the fucking staff so nuts that they, they wanted to kick them out. They threatened to send them away to uh, a really bad place, like an asylum for the criminally insane with the razor wire fences and all that stuff you know one of the worst hospitals in the in the whole state or the whole canadian province or wherever it happens to be and uh they couldn't get them to consent and agree to sign the forms and patient end up just you know taking over the psych ward where literally the mental patient or the crazy the madman let's say took over the asylum to the point where they had to get rid of them they were such a thorn in their side, and they were organizing things with the patients and disrupting everything. <laughs> just, it, they, they just couldn't control them, no matter what they tried to do. It wasn't going to work. You know, it was like they're watching, they have 100 patients, and they're, this, this one, this one is the problem. This one is the troublemaker. This one's the rebel. We cannot control this motherfucker. And he's taking wheelchairs and, and speeding around the hallways, around the corners, and like a racetrack as fast as he can, and you know, doing writing poetry all over the walls, and you name it, you name it. We can't control this patient. This one is out of control. This one is out of control. And that happens. That might happen in psych wards. That could happen in a school, in this realm. That could happen in a workplace with somebody. Uh, it, there's all types of situations that can happen in a family where you're the black sheep, you're the rebel. You know, the rebel archetype is what I'm speaking about, the Jungian ar archetype. You know, the one that came up for me, for example, when I took the test, and that's what that's what the archetype came up as, the rebel. And uh, they were saying, if I'm a free spirit, if I could only rein that in somehow, basically rein in your madness and you know, I, I think of the quotes of you were given a spark of madness or, you know, every genius has a spark of madness. As I've told people, I have the whole fucking madhouse on fire. I don't just, I, I don't just have a spark or a divine spark. You understand what I'm saying? I make, I, I make, <laughs> I can't speak right now, but I'm, I'm, a extre I'm an extremely fiery individual. I have fire inside of me, fire in my veins. 
and not just when I'm drinking whiskey because I'm Irish with fire water, but I have fire in my veins. That's the way I am. And I am very introverted, and I do shun this world. Not that I'm reclusive or just antisocial or I'm not socially awkward. I can talk to people. People do tend to find me friendly and easy to approach and easy to open up to. But I shun this world because I see that this world is sick and evil. And it's designed to cause disease. It's designed to cause pain and suffering. It's designed to break people, to break them down, to break down their spirits. Okay? Break your bodies down too. Degrade your bodies as you age. This whole fucking thing is rigged to break us down. So, yes, I do feel sorry for this girl. And I'm going to call her a girl because she's only, you know, 23 years old. To me, she is like a girl. She might be considered to be a grown adult, but what I see there is, is a girl. Uh, it's heartbreaking what this realm does and that it's designed this way. I understand it's not easy to just accept that. That You can't just hear somebody say it's designed to be evil. It's designed for suffering. It's de designed to create suffering for us. People are going to hear that. They're not going to just nod their head and go, yeah, you're right. I mean, you really have to think deeply about this and see it and look at it to understand what I'm talking about. But that's the design. If you're not suffering, great. You lucked out, though. you got to look beyond yourself because you might be doing fine and having fun. But man, there's, there's a lot of people around you. If you're in California, look at the tent cities and the homeless and Skid Row and the prostitutes and the drug addicts and... I mean, it's just on and on and on and on. You know, it's uh, it's pretty fucking bad already here. If you see what I'm saying. It's pretty bad for people that have a home, that have a, an apartment or a place to live, and they're struggling, and they're dealing with sh shit. They're dealing with mental illness and physical illnesses and mental, you know, uh, anxiety, depression, uh, bipolar disorder, uh, schizophrenia, uh you know, they could have diabetes, they could have uh, high blood pressure, they could have all kinds of different diseases, they could be blind, they could be in a wheelchair, they could have chronic pain, fibromyalgia, the list is just endless, it's just fucking endless and endless, it, it just, it goes on forever, man, and yeah, it can, it can drive you nuts if you really think about it and focus on it too long, but if you don't focus on it at all, and you're not going to see it then, you're not going to understand us people that are talking about the soul trap and topics such as this, deep topics that matter. We're examining reality. We're researching reality, basically. We're taking a, a real uh, detective's look at reality, in a sense. A Sherlock, you might say. Uh, Sherlock the detective, my puppet, my partner in crime, all right? And crime solving. We're calling out the felons on YouTube, uh, the dis and the deceivers that aren't felons, too. But um, do you see what I'm saying? Like, here's what I'm getting at. Here's why I'm doing this, this video. To understand this realm, you have to, un you have to look at deeply and understand the suffering here. Or you won't understand any of this. You just won't do it. You, it's impossible. You can't understand the soul trap if you think everything is wonderful here and you don't notice the suffering. Or if you think, oh, there's a little bit of suffering or it's balanced, it's 50-50, you'll never see the soul trap that way. You have to take a real honest look at how other people beyond you are suffering massively and are born into suffering. It's not just, oh, they were had a great life and they fucked it all up. They, they did something stupid, you know, uh, a woman cheated on her husband and broke up her family and left the left her three children and went and you know hooked up with a pimp and was on the streets and ruined her life or something a story like that no that's not that that can happen of course but that's not always the case a lot of time people are sabotaged their lives are fucked from the start they don't have a chance and it's 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 painful it fucking hurts to look at that and that's why people avoid it. Maybe you're not as strong as we are. Instead of looking at us like we're warped or we're deranged for seeing this soul trap and seeing the suffering, maybe you're not strong enough to see the suffering and take an honest, real look at it the way we have. 
maybe you can't do what we do. So maybe you run the other direction, the new age direction, to love and light, calling everything love and light, telling people love and light, and all that kind of stuff. You're not looking at the darkness. You're missing most of the picture, not just half of the picture, most of it. It's not 50% light and 50% dark in this realm. The darkness consumes this place, dominates. I would say it's at least 80% darkness here and 20% light. And I'm usually very generous. I'm well aware there's people that would put it in the 90-something percent. I know that. I know, believe me, and there's days that I feel that way too. I look at this place and I'm like, fuck. This hell realm. This sewer matrix. And I don't know if this girl in the video, will exotic, will ever see this video by me. But if you do, thank you for telling your story this way, for being honest, for having the courage to do that. And I'm not going to look down on you. I'm not going to judge you for what happened to you in life and for things that you've had to do to survive and for what you went through as a child. Because there's a lot more in this that I couldn't cover it all. So I encourage people to watch the whole original video. And I will post a link to this original video so you can just... You don't have to search. You can just click on it and go there. But a strong being, if she's seeing this, if you're seeing this right now, exotic, you're a strong being. You didn't deserve this. You didn't deserve this here, this life, and what was done, and the pimp, everything, all of it childhood to pimps to everything all right i understand and i can see the sadness in your eyes right now where i have it paused see that and uh i hope you get out of this place i hope you get out of this realm i hope somehow my video gets recommended to you or somehow you come across it and you see it all right I really do. And I hope you get a chance sometime to watch some of the videos on my channel if you're watching this now. And I would I would personally try to help you understand that this isn't everything, this realm. That you can get out of here. You can choose freedom. You don't have to come back here again and do this shit again. This place is fucked. And I know. I know it is. And I'm sorry that you had to go through all this. You didn't deserve that. You deserve better than this. I don't know if anyone has ever told you that before, but you deserve better than this. This fucked up place. And I, I haven't lived the same life as you, but I have gone through some things, and I have seen some things, seen, had friends that have gone through some, some terrible things too told me, opened up to me, told me about some things in, in my lifetime. And uh, I'm just sorry, you know. Sorry you've had all this struggle and suffering. It's t it, we're in a terrible place. We're, we're in an evil realm. And uh, I hope you stick around if you watch this. If you happen to watch this, post a comment and contact me. I would do my best to help you to, to get out of this this fucked up realm because you are someone that really does deserve one day to be free from this. This place is hell. This is a hell realm. It truly is a hell realm. And people that deny that are just not telling the truth. They're not looking at the pain and suffering that others are going through every day here. Realize it's a lot just to even look at it, not to even to even live it, you know. So you have strength. You have resilience. From what I can see, you have a true spirit. You did not deserve this. You deserve better than this. I want you to say that. If you're watching this right now, and anyone else too, not just exotic, if she's watching, but anyone else watching this, say it out loud. 
I deserve better than this. I did not deserve this suffering, this hell realm. It's not my fault. I didn't create this place. I didn't create this suffering and disease here. I deserve better. I'm serious too. Say that out loud, please. Please do that. And let that weight go. It's not your fault. It wasn't your choice. You didn't choose this. This is a hell realm. It's not your fault. You deserve better. You deserve better than this. And we will get free. We will choose freedom. And I'm not even joking when I say I will destroy this fucking matrix and set every spirit here that's a real true spirit free, a good spirit free, including the animals. I'm sick of this fucking matrix. I am I, I, completely sick of it to the point where whatever monsters that people are calling gods, I can't even say on YouTube what I will do. Tired. My spirit is tired. And uh, I'm tired of seeing so many in this realm suffer so much. So much suffering here. Care. I have, I have compassion and empathy for them. And I do want to destroy this fucking matrix. I'm, I'm not going to ever say otherwise. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That's what I want to do. I'm well aware there's shills on YouTube discouraging people from ever even attempting that. This place should not exist. We deserve better. We deserve better than this. Say it a few more times out loud if you want to. I deserve better. I didn't choose this. I didn't create this fucked up place. Sorry to the people that are going through so much right now, so much suffering. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Don't let other people gaslight you and blame you and have you blaming yourself for this. They're evil. They're wicked, the ones that are doing that. They truly are. To gaslight someone that has amnesia, that doesn't know how they got into this realm, to blame them for this. That gaslighting is wicked. It's evil. They're on team evil. Anyway, I, I I I have to end this video. I'm getting I'm gonna end up getting too worked up, and uh, it's getting <laughs> it's getting very late here, and uh, I hope this came across the way that I intended. It, it infuriates me when people defend this this hell realm, defend the suffering here, defend their quote God, their monster, and everything else, and blame us for it. It's wrong to do that. This is not our fault. We don't deserve this. This suffering is not teaching us. It's harming us. It's traumatizing us. It's horrible. Fucking terrible. And it's sickening. And it's heartbreaking. It makes me choked up to see the suffering. I can hardly get through certain videos. And I'm and I'm a pretty strong person, but I've seen so much and just so much, and it's just everywhere. I wish I could end the suffering. It's not just that I don't like seeing it. I wish I could do something, if you see what I'm saying. So yes, I am passionate. I am emotional. It does get to me. This does get to me. Heartbreaking. It hurts to see this. And I wish the best for good spirits. I truly do. And I want to help them. But sometimes in this place, I don't know how. I don't know how to do that. And it's not that I'm a stupid man. I'm not stupid. But I don't know how. I don't think this place can be fixed. It's designed this way. It's infuriating to see suffering, and to know it's designed this way. 
Wait, I, I have to end this at some point. I've rambled on long enough. I hope I made some kind of impact. I hope I broke through to some people, especially the ones that are still in denial about the suffering here that have Stockholm Syndrome. I hope you break free from that. I really do. Be honest, I know that, as far as I'm concerned, it's knowing if you don't break free from that, you're going to be back here again. You might be suffering in your next life from as a baby, or you might be born deformed or, or blind in a wheelchair, or you might be on the, the streets. I'm not wishing any of this upon you. Far from it. I'm trying to spare you so that you have a chance of avoiding that possibility, because that's a possibility with, re, with reincarnation. It's not what I want. I don't want that to happen to you or to anyone. But look around. There's already people here like that born like that, into lives like that. You see what I'm saying? This is hard stuff to talk about. This is not easy. It's not easy for me to do this. It takes a lot out of me to make a video like this. Because I know I'm going to feel it as I'm saying it. I don't want you to be mind wiped and come back here and suffer again. Anyone that's listening to this video including the ones that are brainwashed, including the ones that are still under Stockholm Syndrome, defending this realm. I want you to choose freedom. I want you to be free. Do you understand? I want you to be free. But what chance do you have of escaping this place if you can't even see what this realm is here? How are you going to see the deceptions in the next realm, in the astral realm, once you leave your body, once you, quote, die, okay, once your spirit leaves. You can't see through things here. I mean, do you see what I'm saying? Like, you're going to walk into the first mouse trap with cheese in it there. You're going to fall for it. They're going to say, you won, congratulations, you know, you did it, you did it, you passed. They're going to have a party for you and, you know, a big welcoming committee and just pat you on the back and pat you on the head and say, good girl or good boy or, you know, awesome, you're here with your relatives. They're just going to throw out every illusion, every trick in the book. you got to start seeing through this stuff here. Please work harder on that if you're still, you know, someone that is defending this realm. I, I, I don't see it as defensible. I see this realm as indefensible. All right, indefensible. When I look at this realm and I look at how it's designed and the suffering and the amount of diseases and the ones that are born, like this this young woman, this girl, with no fucking chance. What I mean? It shows this realm is fucked up. It's evil. It's not good. So I don't know why you're seeing it as good saying I have to end this video and then I talk for another two, three minutes or whatever. Five minutes, I mean. Oh, fuck. But this is, this, is a, this is deep stuff to look into. And it's difficult. It's emotional. So pardon me for getting emotional during this. But I had to let this out. And I hope her story helps people and I think it would be amazing if she came onto my channel. I'm not saying I'm an expert at, 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 at anything, all right? But I would attempt to help her in life and help her see what this realm is and help her however I could. I would reach out and try to help. So, Exotic, if you play this video, please reach out to me. I'm sincere. You know, it's hard to trust people, especially after living what you've lived through already. I understand. I understand how it would be. So, but, you know, I hope you do. I hope you do see this. And I really hope that I'm able to help you or someone else. Just sorry that you've gone through all that. This place is fucking hell. It truly is. 
And it's hard not to just look at your eyes and see the sadness in your eyes. It makes me hate this fucking place. It really does. It makes me hate this fucking place. It truly does. It makes me sad. It makes me want to help. And I care. I really do care. And I think you are strong for going on video and telling your story. Okay? So much love to you and to everyone that watches this. That's a good spirit, a good caring spirit. It isn't an abuser. I don't even want abusers on my channel. I don't want demons on my channel. I'm not going to rant about that, though. I'm going to... I'm going to have to end this here because I can't just stay up all night talking about this. So good night, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye.